In this video, I'm going to show you how you can recolor your SVG files using Adobe Illustrator. Okay, first off, I want to say I am not an Adobe Illustrator expert by any means. So if you're going to ask me questions about Adobe Illustrator, uh, obviously it's only applicable to this particular workflow I'm going to show you today. Now, when I design e-learning for my clients or for organizations that I'm working for, uh, I typically will replace the standard play bar controls with my own navigation controls. And rather than using buttons that say the word next and back and play and so on, I prefer to use iconography. And in this case here, a lot of times when you find an icon that you wish to use, it's in SVG format. Ultimately, I might export it over to PNG and resize it. One of the advantages of SVG is I can export it into any size that I wish. But the other advantage is that I can use a tool like Adobe Illustrator to recolor those icons to match the look and feel of the e-learning that I'm developing. So in this example here, I'm using icons that I found from Google. They have this particular website where you can select and search for various different material design icons, which are typically used in the Android operating system, but also all around the web as well. In this case here, maybe I'm looking for a play icon, so I can search for that. And if I select this one here, this additional panel shows up along the right-hand side. I'll provide a link to this website in the description of this video as well. Here's where I can make a few different choices. Uh, we're working with SVG, so almost this doesn't matter, but I like to still select the largest possible image I can. And again, even though I'm going to be changing the color, it's often easiest to work with black. And of course, then I'll just simply download the SVG uh, to my computer. Now I can go ahead and minimize the website here. And what we'll do is we will navigate to where that download is stored. It's typically in the downloads folder there. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and open that up inside Illustrator. Here it is. So as I said before, I am not an Illustrator expert, but this is something I do quite frequently. So I do know this process well. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the Layers panel. Of course, if that's not already open, you can select it from your window drop down here. And if I select that, you'll see, of course, a little micro version of this icon here. Just expand that up so you can see all of the layers and then select the individual elements that you wish to recolor. In this case, there's really only one choice and I can select that there. So with the actual layer selected, I can now go to the properties panel. And again, like I said before, you can find that in the window dropdown or if it's already open right here. The section we're going to be dealing with is this appearance section here. And depending on the complexity of this SVG, you might have additional options to select like stroke or, you know, what opacity you wish to set. I'm going to ignore those and just focus on the color palette, which is available here. Now, if this opens up with this setting here, just click on the color palette and this is going to give you uh, your choices of colors here. If you're not seeing a standard RGB selection or hexadecimal uh, selection down here, just uh, select that from this little menu here. Perhaps uh, HSB is selected or CMYK is selected. And if you're not familiar with using those settings, RGB is probably your safe bet here. And then, of course, you can use the slider controls to select a new color for this particular image here. Alternatively, you can simply type in the hexadecimal code that you're looking for here, and then you're good to go. Now, I'm going to save this as a PNG, but one of the beauties of an SVG is that if I wanted to save this as 100 pixels wide or 500 pixels wide, I'm going to get a nice, crisp, clean PNG file, regardless of what size I need. So I'm going to click on the file drop down menu and I'm going to select export and then choose export for screens. 
Here I can give my image a name. We'll call this play button. And I can choose where I'm going to save it. So if I need it on my desktop, of course, I can select it right there. And then, of course, I can choose the scale that I wish to use. In this case, it's nice to choose a width or height and just simply type in the number of pixels that you need. It's been my experience that about 50 pixels is perfect for touch screens like tablets and smartphones. So you might want to go 100 pixels anyway, but in theory, you could go as high as you wish. So maybe 500 pixels. Once you export that artboard, it's going to create a folder called 500W. And contained within that, of course, is your play.png image recolored for your e-learning design. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.